the Queen, everyone began to talk of the army that was coming from England to Scotland. Everyone knew that Seward was leading the army, but Battle was determined to fight his enemies and he collected his own army. At Macbeth's castle there were strange rumours about Macbeth's Queen. Some people said the Queen had gone mad, while others said that she was very ill. There was always a doctor there. One day, uh, of the queen's servant, one of the queen's servants came to the doctor. There is something very wrong with the queen, she said. She walks in her sleep. If you watch with me tonight, you will see something very strange. The doctor had the, and the servant waited in the corridor outside the queen's room that night. She will come soon, the servant said. She always comes at this hour of the night. I have seen her many times. Just then they heard a noise from the Queen's room and the door opened. Macbeth's wife came out. You see, the servant said, she's walking, but she's asleep. But she's doing something, the doctor said. She seems to be rubbing her hands. She always does that, the servant told him. It's uh, as uh, if she were washing her hands. I've seen her do that before. The queen began to speak to herself. I clean these hands. I must clean these hands. Don't be afraid, Macbeth. No one will know it was us. What a lot of blood Duncan has. The doctor was very excited. He touched Saren's arm. Did you hear that? He whispered. I wonder what that means. The queen went on talking in her sleep. Macduff, the wife, where is she now? These hands of mine, they'd never be clean. One thing is certain, the servant said to the doctor. She has done terrible things, uh, this queen of ours. I can't tell her, the doctor said. She is ill in the mind, and I can do nothing to help her. She will soon go to bed, the servant said. The queen continued to look at uh, her hands. Then she spoke again. Banku is dead. He can't hurt you. My hands, my hands, my hands. Who will wash my hands? Then the queen returned to her room. The doctor thought about what uh, he had seen. It's true that she seems mad, he thought, but her madness makes her tell the truth about the things she and Macbeth have done. They must have some terrible secrets. Macbeth waited for the enemy. Every day more of his men deserted him, but Macbeth did not care. Cowards, let them go, he thought. The soldiers who remain only obey me because they are afraid, afraid of me. This is the last battle I will fight. I am tired of my life. I have no friends. Then he remembered the words of the witches. No man of woman born can hurt Macbeth. Ha, he said to himself, I am not frightened of any man. Macbeth can defeat me. What else did the, the witches tell me? Now I remember. Macbeth will never be defeated until Birnam Hood to Zinna's hill and marches against him. That's it, he thought. I'll take my arm into dancing and see I cannot be defeated there. There is still hope. I am ready to fight now. Uh, the couple, Macbeth and uh, the Queen, are depressed. And Macbeth uh, imagine, keep, uh, in, keep uh, thinking, keep wondering about his illusion to uh, fight uh, and win against the other lords uh, that uh, uh, are very fond uh, in the decision to revenge uh, um, their uh, common uh, friend uh, Macduff. I don't know how to tell you, sir, the messenger said. I have seen something that I don't understand. 
What do you see? Tell me quickly, ordered Macbeth. I was standing on the castle wall, said the messenger. As I looked out towards Birnam Wood, the hood seems to move. You're lying. It's impossible, shouted Macbeth. Suddenly he was afraid. You can see for yourself, sir. The messenger said Birnam Wood is moving toward Dancinane Hill. Then I am finished, Macbeth said to himself. Birnam Wood has come to Dancinane Hill. He thought for a moment. Then he made a decision. If I am going to die tonight, today, I will at least die like a man, and then in battle. He dressed himself in armor and went out to meet the enemy. As Macbeth went out to the battle, one thought encouraged him. There is one hope, he told himself. None of my enemies can kill me. The witches told me that I can't be killed by any man born of woman. Macbeth fought against the English army with courage. In the middle of the fighting, Seward son came up to him. The young man challenged him. Who are you? He cried fiercely. You will be afraid to hear my name, Macbeth told him. I am Macbeth. I hate that name, the young man told him. Maybe you do that. You do hate it, Macbeth replied, but you fear it. Two. You are afraid of me, and you are right to be afraid of me. No one can kill me. I am not afraid, the young seaward replied. They look out their swords and began to fight. Macbeth killed the young man. He looked down at the young man's body. You could not hurt me, he thought. You were born of woman. As the battle continued, it became clear that the English army was winning. Macbeth's soldiers were killed and his castle was taken. What now? he asked himself. My army is gone and my castle is taken. What can I do? At the moment, Macduff appeared. I have been searching for you, he cried. You killed my wife and children and now I'm going to kill you. Macduff raised his sword and moved towards Macbeth. Keep away from me, Macbeth warned him. You can't kill me. No man born of woman can kill me. Run and save yourself. Macduff looked at his enemy. Know this, Macbeth. He shouted. I was not born of woman. I was taken early from my mother's womb. Prepare to die. The witches played with me, Macbeth thought. Everything they say was true, but it was all a trick. I believed them and now I am defeated. He turned to Macduff. I won't give, I won't fight you, he said. You must surrender then, Macduff told him. You will be our prisoner and everyone will come to mock you. No, cried Macbeth. I won't surrender. I won't be mocked by the people. Everything is lost. Birna Wood has come to dancing ill and you are not a woman born. Still, I prefer to fight. If I must die, I want to die like a king. Macbeth and Macduff fought together with their swords. Macduff killed the murder of his wife and children. He cut off Macbeth's head and put it on the end of his sword. Then he carried it to Malcolm. I have brought you the traitor's head, your majesty, he said. You will be the new king of Scotland.